Oh, hey guys, <laughs> Mr. Marius is here. Uh, this time I'm going to talk to you about logistic equations. So, um, a different type of model that's kind of like a uh, exponential. I'm just doing my little neck dance right here. Um, it's like a like a exponential regression. Or oh, regression. It's like an exponential, um, except uh, it's a little bit, I think, more realistic. So. Um, this is a logistic differential equation, d, d, um, dp over dt, dp is sub dt, uh, equals k times p, parentheses, m minus p. m is called the carrying capacity. It's kind of like, um, you know, really kind of what happens is that um, if you had this differential here, so... Um, let me let me show you this differential with this uh, slope field, and it'll make a little bit more sense what I'm talking about when this when this grows. Because uh, you know, realistically, come on, computer, let's go. Okay, realistically, and uh, I know I'm going like, you know, realistically, in a in in a in a in a, in a I can't talk. Exponential model looks like this. Go straight up like that, right? Well, you know, realistically, population really isn't going to grow like that. Um, at some point, the resources, you know, they go away and um, you can't sustain uh, a growth that's unlimited. So real, more realistically, that growth is going to increase, you know, kind of exponentially and then start to decrease later on um, and then kind of flatten out like it's going towards another horizontal aspect. So that's a logistic function. Um, the common form of a log logistic function looks like this. Uh, where M is kind of like your limit, uh, your limit to growth or your carrying capacity. And K is your, uh, your proportionality constant. Okay, so let's take a look at this example here that I have. Now, a national park is capable of supporting no more than 100 grizzly bears. And this, you know, this is kind of true. You don't want to have too many of one animal type in a certain area. Uh, we can model this equation with a logistic differential equation. Uh, with the k being 0 0.001. So let's go ahead and write that differential equation. And we're just going to use what we had up on the top. So dp, the population, the difference, the um, rate of change of the population of t, now you can see that from here, is equal to 0 0.001 times p population the limit of the population minus the population itself. Okay, so that would be our differential equation. Now, what I have here is a, a slope field that is for this differential equation. So if I, if I just did this slope field, let's go like this. All right, and I drew, remember I wanna stay parallel to these guys. Looks like that, right? What um what what does the horizontal appear to be? Horizontal asymptote appear to be right right around here. Looks like it's a hundred, right? So the horizontal asymptote looks like p equals a hundred. Um, what happens if the starting point is above this asymptote? Well, if it's above the asymptote, then instead of the population um, increasing to 100, it's actually going to decrease to 100 like that, right? So I'm going to go and say um, the population decreases to 100. You know, that kind of makes sense. You know, if we had, if we can only support 100 grizzly bears, and we start with 500 grizzly bears, it's got to go down to 100, right? We, we can't support all 500 of them. All right, and if it's below the asymptote, well, that's what we have in blue here. So the population increases to 100, right? Now, if the park begins with 10 bears, Sketch the graph of P sub T on the slope field. So I already kind of sketched uh, a sketch two graphs here, and I already did that here. This is 10, right? This is 10. So if I start 10 bears, I'm going to go, and I'm going to follow along this slope field, and it looks like that, OK? 
okay? So now let's see the calculus behind this. So let's go ahead and solve the differential equation that I started with. Um, and we're going to solve it with the initial condition in that we start with 10 bears. So our initial condition is 10 comma 0. And our... Here is the... Okay. Sorry, I'm looking up and you're looking like in my nose here. Here's the... Here's a differential equation, so we're going to use our separation of variables technique, right? Um, and we're going to get dp over um, p times 100 minus p equals 0 0.001 times dt. And that's just because I multiplied dt over and divided that by there. And we're going to integrate both sides. Now, uh, this integral right here, the first one, that is a sep um, a partial fractions. So we're going to have to deal with the partial fractions here. So I'm going to do the partial fractions in red uh, or in green just so – actually, I'm going to do it in red. I'm going to do it in red just so we know it's a different thing. I'm actually doing work. Okay, so um, let's say – that I'll do it over here. Okay, I'll do it right here. A equals – oops. So this really is going to be A over P – plus a over 100 minus p. Oops, a. What you, come, what you talking about, Willis? It's b. Okay. Equals 1 over p times 100 minus p. And if you don't know what I'm doing, go back and watch my partial fractions video. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have a 100 minus p plus bp equals 1. Let's go ahead and let a equal... Um, sorry, let, let P equal 100. So if P is 100, then that's going to give me BP, oops, that's going to give me 100B equals 1. So B is 1 over 100. And we're going to go ahead and let P equals 0. And that's going to give me 100A equals 1. So A equals 1 over 100. Okay, so that's going to give me uh, 1 over 100 over P plus 1 over 100 over 100 minus P dP equals the integral of 0 0.001 dT. I just brought this guy down. All right, then I'll go back to the blue, okay? All right, so now we're going to have uh, 1 one hundredth ln of P plus 1 one hundredth ln of 100 minus P, both in absolute values, equals 0 0.001 T plus C. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I am going to multiply everything. Oops, I forgot a minus here. Minus. It's a minus because I have a negative P inside. All right, I'm going to multiply everything by 100 to get rid of this 100 here. So ln of P minus ln of 100 minus P equals 100 times it's going to be 0.1 T plus C2. This was C1. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to multiply actually everything by a negative, and get um, ln of 100 minus p minus ln of p equals negative 0.1t plus c3. Now, I just want to uh, tell you that I did that. There's going to be a reason why I did that negative, and you'll see why in just a few moments here. Um, but there's important for me. It was important actually, just algebraically for me to do that. So. I'm going to come up here now. I know it's a lot of work, guys. Okay, so then I'm going to put these together as ln of 100 minus p over p using a logarithm rule. And then I'm going to e both sides, so e, e. And I'm going to get, now, one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 100 over p 
and minus p over p, which is 1, equals e to the negative 0.1t plus c3. Remember when we were doing um, exponential growth and decay, whenever we had that e to the c plus 3, we just brought that out as a, another, you know, another uh, constant. So I'm going to have 100 over p equals 1. I'm going to add one to both sides. Plus c4 e to the negative 0.1t. Then I'm going to um, flip this and multiply by 100. So I'm going to have p over 100 equals 1 over 1 plus c4 e to the negative 0.1t. Multiply both sides by 100, and I finally get 100 over 1 plus c4 e to the negative 0.1t. Okay, so that is my um, my general solution, and now i got to figure out for my initial condition. So my initial condition was that p sub 0 is equal to 10. So I'm going to plug 0 in for t, and e to the 0 is going to give me 1. So I'm going to have 10 equals 100 over 1 plus C4. And I'm going to go and solve that. 10 plus 10 C4 equals 100. Subtract 10. 10 C4 equals 90. C4 is 9. So all together, I get P equals 100 over 1 plus 9 e to the negative 0.1 t. And you guys are probably thinking to yourself right now, oh my God, that was a long problem and you're expecting us to do the whole thing? I don't really think you're going to have to do that entire thing, folks. Um, but just know that, you know, the logistic formula comes from a separation of variables. So you'll need to be able to kind of see that as you go along with some of these problems, okay? So let me show you these other ones that, you know, we'll, we could do a lot faster just knowing the general form of this, okay? So instead of solving the differential equation, which we just did, let's just use the general form of the logistic and uh, plug in the things that we know. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the things that we know. We know that M was 100 because that's the carrying capacity, all right? We also know that, um, that okay, so let's go ahead and use the formula here. P equals M, which was 100, over 1 plus C, e to the negative. We know K, K was 0 0.001. We know M, which was 100, and T is time. All right, and then all we have to do now is we can solve for C. Okay, so a uh, piece of zero equals 10. So we're going to go and do 10 equals 100 over, again, 1 plus C. And then when we solve that, we get C equals to 9. Okay, so we're going to get P equals 100 over 1 plus 9. And we multiply 100 times 0 0.001 and we get negative 0.1t, okay, bam. So, you know, we can do it if we just know what that general form is of the logistic expression. Find the limit as the t approaches infinity. Well, as t approaches infinity, we get, um, what's this e to the, to the, actually, this is a negative 0.1, so this is actually going to be 1 over e to the 0.1, which is going to go to 0. So the limit is going to be 100, which is kind of what we thought it was going to be because that's a limit to growth, okay? So um, really quickly, I've got like 20 seconds here. When will the bear population reach 50? So to do that, we just set that equal to 50, and we solve. All right, so we're going to get t equals about 21.972 years. This is probably going to be a calculator problem, okay? When will the bear population grow the fastest? When will the bear population growing the fastest? Okay, when P is equal to 50, which is T equals 21.972 years. Okay, all right, there, guys, logistic formulas.